Hello, friends, Spacey Ghost, back from the void, and we're playing Dream Daddy. We finished up with Matt here. Who should we date? The only reason I'm not doing anything with Joseph is because, like, recently, there's a bunch of, like, girlfriend issues going on in Iki's route in Amnesia, and I don't want to deal with that. And Joseph's a married man, so I'm gonna have to deal with, like, lady stuff there, so... You know what? We don't know anything about him. Let's just dig into Robert. Hello, Robert. Let's message you. See what's up. What are your secrets, Robert? Please, let us know. In the comments below. No, not really. <laughs> I realize that could open up to so many spoilers. I just realized that, uh... A lot of this might be repetition. Who knows what'll happen. Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome too. Oh boy. We should hang out. I type out a message to him on dad book. Hey Robert. Good seeing you again at the cookout. Wanna grab a drink? I sit there for a couple of seconds hoping he'll message me back. Um. Yo. Uh, Mothman's my fave. What, what's your fave cryptid? Hey, it says that he read my message. What the fuck, Robert? Get on our level. I anxiously wait for a response. Uh, let's watch cat videos on the internet. Cats are cute. I wish I had a cat. I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I watch maybe the, my 30th cat video, Robert pops back into my head. I jump back over to Dadbook and see if he responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. Either that, or he's not awake until like 6pm. Might as well make the best of my day. I get up, walk to the living room, then sit down and turn on the TV. Ooh. Again, if it's anything paranormal related, i definitely check out the History Channel. This is in the morning, right? So I would go with the Food Channel, but usually in the morning they have Pioneer Woman. And I don't know why, I just hate... Well, I don't hate. I, I like, dislike the show on a weird spiritual level. Game shows, yes, I could go for some cringe. Ooh, Family Fortune's on. All right, Nicole, your parents are in the lead, and it's up to you to win it big. Are you ready? I'm ready. They hook the contestant up to a lie detector in front of her parents. Who's your favorite parent? Oh, shit, getting deep here. Uh, my, my mom? Ooh, sorry, incorrect. Next question. If both of your parents were hanging off the edge of a cliff, which would you save? Ah! Uh, Ah, uh, this is terrible. I love it. I lose several hours to watch whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I get up and walk around my house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for old Chef Hopkins to cook a gourmet le delicacy. And by that, I mean heat up something in the microwave and hope it's not trash. Walk over to their fridge and open the door. Ew. Ew. Microwaved eggs. Ew. I mean, they're good when you're desperate, but come on. Uh, let's make a sandwich. I make a sandwich in its entirety while standing there. Who needs plates? The sandwich. A lost art. I admire my work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire thing on the floor. No! My child! I just birthed you and now you're, you're in shambles. I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. I'll save you, child. This is still good. Five second rule, right? I definitely mopped a few days ago. Yeah. I reassemble my sandwich, peeling pickles off the floor and putting them back where they belong. In my mouth. Wait, I'm a wreck. 
I finish my snack and walk around the house some more. Bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that could hang off the door. That'd really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. I spent a couple of minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam, and come into the jam. I take a leap from the free throw line, and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild, and welcome to the jam. I pull up from the three-point line, breaking ankles and sinking in a fadeaway, and I forgot the rest of the words to the song. No look behind the back, hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something, 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 space jam. Dad? Oh, fuck. I turn around to see Amanda standing in the doorway. Her eyes are a little puffy. Almost as if she's been crying. I, I, I'm i sorry, are, are my moves too cringy for you? Hey, Amanda Panda, you alright? What are you doing? I, uh, found the hoop. And I'm taking it to the hole. That's... Pass me the rock. Yes. Granny tossed that apple. I lead the league in blocks. Set the record for rebounds in my rookie year. Think you can handle this? What's a rebound? Oh, uh, when someone misses a shot and the other players try to retrieve it, that's, uh... Just kidding! Amanda zigzags past me and tips a layup into the hoop. Art of war, bitches. Amanda, language. Sun Tzu didn't care about language. I would argue that Sun Tzu cared very much about language, so... Once you write something as timeless as the art of war, then you're allowed to swear. Amanda sticks out her tongue and ducks for another two points. Seriously though, are you okay? You look like you've been crying. Oh, dude, I'm cool. I just saw, like, this really cute dog on the way home and let me pet its belly. I couldn't contain my emotions. Ooh, Popper! Tell me more about this dog. Gladly. She was a little French bulldog named Jacqueline, and her tongue was permanently stuck out of her mouth. She had a little sweater on. Wow, I probably also would have cried if I got to pet her. She was so excited for tummy ropes. Oh no, I'm tearing up just thinking about it. Uh, I don't want to be pushy. But at the same time, I would totally believe my child if, like, they they were crying because of a dog. Change the subject? Oh, okay, just making sure. Maybe you should be less concerned with my face and more concerned with full court press. A man and I play ball for a long longer and then we cook dinner together. We managed to not almost burn down the house this time. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over in an episode of Chopped Toddler Tournament. That sounds like a bad time all around. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar demi-glaze with creme for Nash, of course. This is literally just a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. Yes, we are. Just then, my computer dings. I told you. I told you Rob Robert was a night person. Maybe he's the vampire instead of Damien. Huh, what's that? Oh, yeah. Hot studs messaging me. Man and I walk over to the computer and check Dad's book. That's a message from Robert. All that time, and, and he just asks if we're still up. And then whatever that is, I actually don't know what that means. Amanda, help me. What does it mean? What you doing? What am I doing? You're just chilling. Um, just chilling, I guess. Typhac just chilling. Amanda deletes the G and hits send. Thank you. It'll make you look cooler. What would I do without you, Amanda? Couple moments pass by. Another message pops up. Hey, that means he wants to hang out. I know what it means, Amanda. I don't need that much help. But it's kind of late. Um, come on, Pops. Live a little. 
I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers and bad food. Well, it's your life, but I think you'd have a lot of fun tonight. You're trying to get to know the neighbors better, aren't you? Yeah, fine. I type back a message to Robert asking for details, and he tells me to meet him at Jim and Kim's. Well, don't wait up for me. I never do. I throw on a nice jacket and run out the door. It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. Ooh. Nice. I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of barflies drinking beer and watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave hi as I walk over. Hey man, how's it going? Hey buddy. Ahoy there, Skipper. Oh, hi Mary. Oh, of course you'd be here. Robert and Mary here? Uh-oh. Oh shit. What if we're not like... The Mr. Whatever you call it. Maybe we're not the third wheel in Joseph's route. Maybe it's Robert the whole time. Shit. If that's true, I feel less guilty about Joseph romance. I brought Mary along. Figured we needed a drinking buddy. Oh man. I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. I have to deal with this weird married lady making passes at me. I'm sorry, I'm gay. And, and I'm not rude enough to take someone that's, like, taken. Don't look so scared, kiddo. We're just having a drink. Yeah, speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What are you having? Uh, let's get something tropical. That's fancy. I'm not really into beer, and I've never had whiskey. That doesn't sound like a good idea. What do I look like, a toucan? Welcome to the Robert party. Robert orders three shots of whiskey and passes them between us. Well, this wasn't how I expected my night to be going. Oh shit. Are, are, are we too gay for Robert? Is that it? Sorry, Robert. Here's to bad decisions and relaxed moral values, fellas. What have I gotten myself into? We all knock back the shocks. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat. Holy hell, that was a kick. I look over at Robert and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Let's get marching. I just got here, though. What? The night's young, Chief. Come on, we're bar hopping. Oh, I see how it is. Oh, alright. I don't drink, but okay. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So, where are we headed? I wish I were drinking. It's an Irish pub. Good pun on the whiskey to my heart. Oh, was that bad? I'm sorry, Mary. Puns are the lowest form of humor, Dimitri. Try harder. Well, fuck you. I didn't even ask for you to come here. Ouch. Am I going to be the butt of the joke all night? Jesus, Mary, put your fangs away for a second. We walk into Irish Hour Drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old-timey Irish me memorabilia on the wall. Next round, what are you having? Uh, do they make fruity Irish cocktails? I feel like we're just gonna keep failing with Robert. So, yeah, whiskey hasn't failed me yet. Let's do it. Robert orders three more glasses of whiskey and we post up in the garish green booth. Mary slides in and si sidles up next to Robert, which makes me breathe a sigh of relief. Let's sip this one, why don't we? Suit yourself. Mary immediately drowns her shot in one gulp and burps loudly. I'll put hair on your chest. You're truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Hey. Hey, that's mine. Dimitri, be your dear and get us another round, will ya? I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks from the bartender. As I head back and see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roar, roar, bleh. I don't think I've ever seen this guy smile, let alone laugh. 
Yeah, it feels like I'm third wheeling on something that isn't really my business. Take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. So, Edith's kid snuck in some pot brownies onto the table at the last bake sale, right? And I spot that little hemp sweatshirt gremlin in the act, so I go up to Edith with the baggie and I'm about to tell her when all of a sudden she just freaks out on me. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have been PTA president. Your roots are bad and blah blah blah. So what do you do? I told her to have a brownie and that everything was going to be fine. They both erupt in laughter. I politely follow along with the story. She ate three. Oh, shit. More laughter. Okay. That was actually pretty funny. She called the cops and told them that time had stopped. Mary looks directly at me. Do you smoke weed? What? Dude. What if Joseph knew you were here? You know, the devil's lettuce. You are a religious mom. I, I, uh... I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now, want to blaze. Psst, Mary, you're so savage. Uh, uh, no, I am a law-abiding citizen. Dad tip. As I said in Matt's route, you don't need to smoke pot to have fun. Can't believe you would. I don't even know how you... This is preposterous. Uh... Robert giggles helplessly. I'm just kidding, cowboy. Lay off the kid, Mary. He might not be used to your brand of humor. Fine, fine. I'm not used to any of this. Like, what the fuck? We sit around and sip our drinks. People watching and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, I begin to warm up to Mary. Her jokes become much funnier and less scary. Probably because of the drinks and stuff. But it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I just wanted some alone time with Robert. Wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. Uh, does Joseph know you're here? Whoa, buddy. Bring the sanctity of marriage into this. I, uh... You dig into my private life that I'm sure you think is your business. Slow down, Mary. I'm getting lots of black shit from, from Robert. I'm not... This isn't good. You trying to ditch me, pal? I... No, uh... Because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. I just... Uh... I, no, no, it's fine. Dimitri wants alone time with his new best buddy, Robert. I just asked a simple question. I didn't think you would be friends with Robert. Ready loud and clear, the wingman breaks formation to pursue their prey. Now if you fellas will excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Ah. Mary, what the fuck? Go with God. Nice seeing you. Deuces, nerds. <laughs> okay, that was great. That was a great exit. Mary gets up and saunters over to a younger looking guy at the bar. She grows on you. Does she, though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Well, she does. But what about her and Joseph? What about him? It's just a simple question. They have, like, four kids. And isn't one of them, like, recent, too? You know, they're married, and she definitely tried to get in my pants the other night, and... I gesture to her across the bar, where she's making goo-goo eyes at the young guy from before. Looks like he's being held hostage. Oh, that's just the thing she does. She's harmless. Seducing men, including men that she knows are gay, or at least male-favoring. That, that's, that's not really harmless. That That's pretty bad. Tell that to the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen a war. Robert lets out a hearty laugh. Hey, I got him to laugh. Yes, points to anxiety, Dad. Aw, oh, man. You know I pegged you for one of those straight lace types. Oh, don't worry. I got pretty wild back in my day. Still got a little wild in you? 
Oh god, no, I'm I'm not gonna back out of this. Nope. Ah, uh, you know it. Robert orders a couple more rounds of shots. What am I getting myself into? Think you can go shot for shot? I can certainly try. Just this once. There's only one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and down it. Robert looks impressed. He takes his shot and knocks it back. That's one. So... What do I even talk about? He's so cool. And he probably hates small talk. Uh... So how are... Things? And stuff? Stuff and things? I hate small talk. Oh, okay. Too many people, and this isn't necessarily you, but too many people think that they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of the silence. Or they're afraid of what the other person is going to think of the silence. If you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence drinking whiskey. Oh, alright. Kinda wanted to get to know you, but that's, that's cool. Robert and I sit in silence and drink whiskey. I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer. Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending he got a phone call from one of his friends. Huh. Maybe silence is nice sometimes. So, you ever kill a man? Whoa, whoa. I thought you didn't like small talk. I choke on my drink. Excuse me? Um... You know, watch the life drain from someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams draining away. Every memory and experience they've ever had, gone. Just the fact that this is the one and only life they live and you're, you're the one taking it away. Uh, no. Great, me neither. Robert knocks back his shot and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. I'm just messing with you, relax. I laugh nervously. <laughs> Fun time. Or am I? I laugh nervously again. Please, please, please spare the suspense. We sip more whiskey and people watch some more. Mary has her sights set on another man after the other one excused himself to the bathroom and, I assume, crawled out of the window. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh. This whiskey's hitting me hard. You know what else is hard? You betcha. Robert gets up out of the booth, shouldering his jacket. Let's roll. Sorry, whiskey, inside voices. Let's roll. Wait, what about Mary? Brother, Mary's gonna be just fine. Why Why are we asking about Mary? She's She's not really who we're after. I look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday to him, while he insists that it's not his birthday. That's lovely. We make our way out of the bar and back onto the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, that sidewalk is just coming right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this. It's the first time I've ever been drunk. Where to, chief? You'll see. I follow Robert through the street lamp spotlights until we eventually arrive at a run-down strip mall. There is, a, there is a beauty salon, a sex shop, computer repair store that looks like it's been closed for ten years, and finally, a liquor store. Would they even allow us in here since we're already drunk? Wait here, I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. This is really not where I expected the night to go. I take a sip. Oh, why is it Zinfandel? What? Nothing. I just wasn't expecting. It is delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Don't judge me. Oh, so you do have a soft spot. And you do like girly drinks. I start to say something. Think of his lecture about val valuing the silence earlier, and stop. I sip on my wine, and watch cars drive by. Let's throw rocks at shit. What? What? Uh, okay. 
That was random. Robert suddenly hur hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes throughout the empty parking lot. That felt good. As long as it's just immovable shit and not people. He presses the stone to my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I, I don't know. With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand and look at the stop sign. Back at the rock, back at the stop sign. I know what has to be done. I got a problem with authority! I hurl the rock at the sign. It sells over the stop sign. Ran into the window of a parked ca car leaving crack. Oh shit. Dude, run! I leap up and start to the nearest alley, wine in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. After I'm sure I'm far enough away from the cracked window that I'm no longer culpable for this heinous crime, I stop and catch my breath. Maybe we strike rock throwing from the to-do list. Agreed. Leave the rock throwing to Amanda. Suddenly my stomach growls. Oh man, I'm starving. Let's get pizza. I can't argue with that. Where is good around here? Actually, I don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible and in my mouth in the next five minutes. I know just the place. I follow Robert through the maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint. The bright red neon sign reads, Pete's Pizza Pizza. Ta-da! I can see a few exhausted looking workers behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping up pizzas right out of the stone ovens. My stomach rumbles again. We go up to the counter and get ready to order. Can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh wait, Dimitri, you're cool with pineapple on pizza, right? First, you're, you're down in shots like it's water. Then the rock throwing, and I think is a government property, and now pineapple on pizza? You're making this really hard, Robert. Yeah, no. Robert grabs me by the collar. I respect your opinion, and I'll fight with my life for your right to say it, but where's your sense of adventure? Where's your sense of taste? Why won't you love yourself? I do love myself, that's why I'm saying no. The juiciness of the pineapple paid w paired with the tanginess of the sauce is a flavor combination that everyone should experience at least once, if not a thousand times more. Pineapple on pizza is one of the few things in life that I genuinely and thoroughly enjoy. Please. Please just do this for me. No. Do this for yourself. So, two slices of Hawaiian pizza? abso goddamn -lutely. We wait a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us each a giant slice on a paper plate, so saturated with grease that I'm worried it'll fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. We take a bite out of the pineapple pizza and... Hey! It's just as bad as I thought, because I don't like pineapple. This is the worst mistake ever. I'll still stomach it because I'm hungry, or peel off the pineapple onto this, um... Decrepted street is decrepted a word. I don't know. I'm drunk. Either way, Robert, it's cool that you like it, but never again. Man, I feel way better now. You and me both. We hear a noise coming out of a slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Got any more on that wild in ya? I'm tired, but... My dad's stamina is waning, but I'm game for more. As long as it's not more alcohol. Robert and I slide the door open and peek inside. It's completely dark except for some flickering light. We slowly creep forward, cautious not to be heard or seen. Oh, are we breaking and entering? Oh, it's a movie theater. Okay, I, I can kind of be down with this. Shh. Don't shush me so loud. Shh. We come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We look into the audience and are surprised to find that it's almost completely empty, save for a row of a few teenagers in the front. 
They look annoyed when they notice us. You know what would be a good thing to do in an empty movie theater, Robert? Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater, and I follow him. We settle in with our wines and try and make sense of this movie. It's a romantic comedy, I think. A young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find the woman that he's finally realized he's in love with. Oh boy. It's cliche, but I love it. Kiss already! There's nobody to kiss yet. You want him to kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah. Yeah, now that sounds like a, my favorite kind of plot twist. Kids down the way notice us huckling. One of them speaks up. Hey man, keep it down. Hey Ernest, how about you shove it? Oh damn, that's Ernest Hemingway. Hugo's kid. Ernest, hey Ernest, I know you. It's me, your neighbor. Hi! Ernest turns back around, embarrassed. Turn back to Robert. He kiss anyone yet? Turns out that yes, he did kiss someone. He made his way out to a tiny island near New York to profess his love for a woman who for some reason he knew would be there. She tells him that they hit the jackpot. He said that they had, but I think there's some subtext I'm missing here. Boo, lava's dead. Shut up, it's beautiful. Oh, Ernest, look at you getting in touch with your emotions. I'm proud of you. Ernest grumbles. The credits start to roll. I stand up. Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this film happen, and you're gonna sit here and appreciate them. Yeah. Who knows? With Marvel doing it, their whatever, even romantic comedies could have end credit scenes. Okay. Look at that, Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good, uh, wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film-going experience. And Peter Anders, catering. Fed a bunch of people so they could have the energy to do their jobs. What a guy. We let the credits roll while Robert individually thanks every member of the crew. Once it's finally over, he makes sure no animals were harmed in the making of this film, and we leave the movie theater. We stumble into the theater parking lot, polishing off the rest of our wine. Hey, assholes. Oh shit, it's the cops. I don't know where a rock flies through the air and hits me in the knee. My knee, ah, what the hell? Ernest and his friends stand in the alleyway, blocking our exit. You don't scare me. I know who your dad is. Oh, what do you guys want? Why do you go and throw a rock at my knee? I'm delicate. This is my good knee. More orthopedist is gonna be pissed. Ernest tosses another rock up and down in his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You ruined my theater-going experience. You're gonna have to pay. Oh, well, I don't have any cash on me right now, and, like, the movies got really expensive. Ernest tosses another rock at my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I didn't properly stretch before physical activity. And I'm probably going to feel super sore in the morning. He ruined it for you. That movie was pretty crappy in the first place. Hey, you take that back. That was a beautiful love story with a really genuine acting. You call that good acting? What classicist mainstream slop have you been served your entire life? What? Have you ever seen any Michael Powell? Matter of Life and Death, 1946. Easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Listen, man. No, you listen. That popcorn-ass drivel the mass media is shoving down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sakes. Oh, now you've done it! Ernest rushes Robert, screaming like a banshee. Ernest, you're, you're like what? In 8th grade, and you're fighting with a middle-aged man. You're not gonna win. Ah! I dive between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid. He lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can in the knee. Fuck my knee! God damn it, you kid! Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seen red. Fuck, my fucking knee hurts. Fucking kids. All right, buddy, talk like a punk, get hit like a punk. Robert squares up into a boxer stance. Oh, um, and are you gonna fight a kid? Robert. 
Queensberry rules. Three minute rounds with one minute rest in between. No low blows, fish hooks, J grabs, or high blows. What? And don't even think about pulling an illegal turnstile. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I. You have to designate a second if you're unable to f fulfill your role as main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he's had enough youthful vi vivacity to handle it. Hey man, I don't even want to get dragged into this. That movie sucks. It's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. Sorry, don't make the rules. Talk to Queensberry. We're just gonna go. Ernest and his friends back away. Robert calls after them. The Queensberry Association will hear about this. And consume better content. Once the teens are safely out of earshot, Robert turns to me. Were you about to actually fight that kid? Are you kidding me? I would never hit a child. That would be despicable. You throw the rules at him, though, and they always bolt. Nobody wants a Queensberry sh sanctioned throwdown. But full disclosure, I may have that up. Wow. I don't know if I'm impressed or, or concerned. See, you don't even have to know the rules. You just make them up. Come on, let's get out of here. Robert and I cool down a bit as we walk back to the neighborhood. I'm so sorry. I get really into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay. I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself, but I like watching them. Buddy, I got so much to show you. You ever see any Sam Fuller? I haven't, I, I don't think. Fuller is cash. Um, thanks for the adventure? Adventure's all I got, buddy. Oh, okay, that was a good choice. Robert throws an arm around my sh shoulder and we drunkenly belt out tunes all the way back. We finally get to his doorstep. This was an interesting night. I liked it. Smile forms on his cheeks. A, a rare sight. Let's hang again soon, yeah? Yeah, let's do it. I linger there for a second, swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. Night, bud. Robert heads back inside and I stumble my way back home. Amanda, you have no idea the night I just had. Date complete. I doubt we did good. Let's see, how did we do? How was it? A B? Wow, after all that negative stuff in the bar? I'm surprised. Okay, dad tip. Only get wasted like once in a while. Okay, so date one with Robert is complete. I am so on the fence with him. Honestly, it kind of turns me off when people um, act edgy and dangerous just for the sake of, like, irony's sake. I do really appreciate how serious he is about movies. Like, I'm not that much of a film buff, but I do love me movies. Well, I thank you guys for watching this, and I'll see you guys sometime in the future. Bye!